I have a full background on this Karen. The Karenicity is unbelievable. Put up the picture. We got her name, where she works, her boss. I want to remind you of a couple of things that happened in this video. Obviously, it is telling, right? You know, she said, and I quote, you are hurting my fetus, my unborn child. Did you all hear that part? She said that. Why did she say that? Because that bolsters her argument to do what she's attempting to do, which is theft under any other circumstance. We will call this attempted theft if the black male went up to the white female who paid for her opportunity to utilize the device and he decided to grab it and try to take it. We will call that clearly attempted theft. Several days later. But I want to make it very clear what we do here is opinion commentary. Sometimes that opinion can be incorrect, but it doesn't mean it was developed nor presented in bad faith. And when there's a moment like this, I can't speak for everybody else, I can speak for me. When there's a moment like this, I will always look into this camera and let you know specifically that I am sorry for getting it wrong because I give a damn about getting it right. And so ma'am, once again, I apologize. All right, guys, so I am making a video that I never thought that I would ever make in my life, which is Rashad Ritchie issuing a groveling apology for his premature race hustling, okay? Because as we've covered on my channel, uh, people like Rashad Ritchie and other race hustlers on social media like Tariq Nasheed went out of their way to dox and harass and to encourage vitriol and hate towards a pregnant white woman uh, who has been deemed city bike Karen because they uh, ignorantly believed that she was stealing a bike from five young black scholars after a long day at work as a PA in a hospital, okay? They believed based off this short viral video that again, this pregnant woman who happened to be white was trying to steal a city bike from black teenagers. Again, a story that was just unbelievable on his face, right? Anybody with any knowledge of basic crime statistics knows that this was highly, highly, highly unlikely. And the City Bike Karen's lawyer came out a few days later and provided receipts proving that she, in fact, did rent that bike. That, that bike belonged to her, okay? It belonged to her. And he also said that he was going to sue the media for defamation people like Rashad Ritchie who basically again participated in doxing and harassing her because he wanted to believe so bad that this evil racist white Karen was trying to steal this bike from these young black scholars and that she was trying to weaponize her white tears to potentially put their lives in danger right this is what this man said Okay, he bought on a mayor from Enfield, North Carolina, a small town that I'm very familiar with, by the way, uh, to also call the woman a pregnant thug, okay, and to talk about just how hateful she is and how she's a threat and danger to society. Fast forward a few days later, of course, after the lawyer for the so-called city bike Karen uh, threatened defamation lawsuits against outlets like uh, Richard Ritchie's for his reckless rhetoric, uh, he issued what can be characterized as a walk back, probably not a retraction, but definitely kind of a walk back. And in his walk back, he basically begged the young black scholars to please come out and show receipts, show evidence and proof and tell your side of the story. Uh, because this lawyer is about to sue me, right? Because this city bike Karen has provided receipts and she has good faith to believe that she owned that bike. Okay, she had rights to ride that bike. So please speak out. Please come forward with your story because I'm about to get my ass sued, <laughs> right? That's essentially what that video was, okay? He knew he was in the wrong. And he was also foolish, in my opinion, for waiting for these young scholars to come out and to defend themselves because they're probably guilty, right? More than likely, okay? Just using common sense. So now, today... He's issuing a full-throated apology because guess what? Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> the young black scholars are still nowhere to be found. And this man don't want to get sued, right? Check Yogurt probably told him these young scholars got three days <laughs> to come forward with some evidence that the bike belonged to them 
or you got to apologize. And if you don't apologize, uh, you're going to be fired. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's kind of how this went, which is extremely predictable because this guy has a history of making these types of reckless claims. So I want to uh, react to his apology. One, because it's extremely satisfying. But also, too, because I actually don't think that his apology is good enough, in my opinion, considering some of the things he's saying. But um, I will give him at least some credit for having the cojones to at least issue an apology. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. The story has already been updated. Um, the updated version is still available. And the original reporting was taken down. I want to provide context and a direct examination as well as provide an apology. Let me put up the picture full mass. Last week, 35 million individuals viewed a video, it was viral. This video showed a woman screaming help and black males around her disputing about, about a bike. Well, in that there were two narratives. One narrative was to believe the young people, the other narrative was to believe the adult. In that instance, I believed the young person. I still believe that there's a good faith reason why both possibly believed that they actually had access to that bike. And this is where the ignorance comes in. Or put it this way, maybe it's not ignorance as much as it's just He's trying his best to cover for what he probably knows from a common sense perspective. Maybe he doesn't. Who knows? I mean, the fact that he failed for this story in the first place shows that he probably doesn't have much common sense. But he's trying to cover for these black teenagers. Okay, he's trying to make sure that he doesn't come out here and to state the obvious about what was probably happening in that situation. Let's spend a little bit more here. At no point did I ever believe that the young black male was trying to rob the female in question. But now it has been reported that there's a receipt showing she had a good faith reason to believe that the city bike was hers. Naturally, that information has not been rebutted nor confirmed at all by the others involved. We're still waiting for an update. Also, city bike has not confirmed, at least at this point, how this could have happened where two individuals possibly believed that they both rented that same bike. Now, <laughs> again, this is why I'm just like, the, again, this is, <sighs> why do you believe so much that these black teenagers had good faith reason to believe that they had access to that bike? They know they didn't have access to the bike. Stop, right? Stop with the gas lighting, okay? This is why I have a problem with this. Just come out and give your apology and be done. He's trying to give an apology, but all the same, also at the same time, defend these black teenagers who left people like him out to hang, okay? Because they put that video online knowing that that bike didn't belong to them, right? Anybody that's ever rented one of these bikes knows damn well that it's not possible for two people to think that that bike belongs to them at the same time, Right? That woman got on the bike, she scanned it, she paid for it, she tried to pull out, and then they tried to take the bike from her. They didn't scan it. They know it didn't belong to them. Okay? Just call it what it is. And if you're not going to call it what it is, then don't mention it. But don't sit here and try to play me like I'm dumb and try to act like, well, you know, we, don't, we shouldn't question the motives of these young black men. You know, they had good faith, but reason to believe that it belonged to them. No, they didn't. You have no evidence or proof to, to back that up. But see, you know how this works. You see how this works. The white pregnant Karen, right, before the truth came out, he didn't need any evidence or proof to come out here and unequivocally say that she was trying to steal it. She was trying to weaponize her white tears, right? But now that she's provided proof and evidence that, hey, that bike did belong to her. Now, all of a sudden, well, you know, we can't sit here and say that these teenagers were trying to steal the bike. Because we don't have any evidence or proof they were trying to steal the bike. We really don't know. But when you didn't have evidence or proof that the racist white Karen was trying to steal the bike, you had no issues coming out here and 
saying the things that you said about her, making the claims that you made about her. It's amazing how that works. And then he's going to claim that he doesn't have any racial bias. I don't believe this because of race. This doesn't have anything to do with race. Let, let's listen. At the same time, over 35 million views, well over 100 publications covered it. And there were two narratives. My advocacy, my advocacy was connected to their youth, not their race. Lie. BS. It didn't have anything to do with your advocacy for use. It had everything to do with the fact that you looked at this situation from a racial lens. You saw dollar signs. You said, oh, this is going to my Karen library, right? This is another racist Karen trying to weaponize her white tears and get black men killed. That's exactly what you saw when you saw this video. And your racial hatred blinded you. And it made you go out here and to falsely report on this story. And now you have to issue an apology that you really don't want to issue. Because you did not do your due diligence before coming out here and making these unequivocal claims about this woman. But see, here's the issue. Those same black teens that this man is trying so hard to defend will probably have no issues robbing him. If that's, in fact, what they were doing, allegedly, I don't know if that's what they were doing. They're not out here helping his case, even though he begged them, right? He begged them to come out here and to, hey, show us your receipts. Tell your side of the story. These are the most wanted black men in America right now. Because there's still people out here that's still holding on to this. They're, they're still holding on to this idea that this woman stole the bike, right? That she's racist. She tried to hide these young scholars killed. They're even going as far as to say that the receipts that the lawyer provided were false. They were fake. This is what they're saying. And those guys are missing in action. What are these young black teams? Nowhere to be found. So they left you out to dry, Doc. <laughs> right. They left you out to dry, dry. But here you are issuing a groveling apology while also at the same time still trying to defend these guys. I don't know why. Because here's the truth of the matter. If they really believed, if they had good faith belief, Dr. Rashad Ritchie's words, if they had good faith to believe that that bike belonged to them and it, it was simply a mix up, why not speak out? If they wasn't committing any crimes, if they di didn't do anything wrong, why not speak out? It's five of them. You can't get in contact with any of those kids you can't find any of those five kids that were there why not because if it was an honest mis mix up all they got to do is come out here and say hey you know what it was a mix up you know we thought we had to bike this is the reason why we thought we had to bike we're sorry right we're sorry please stop demonizing this woman yada yada that's what a good person would do that's what a good young man would do the fact that these young men haven't come out here and issued an apology to this woman for posting that video in the first place and trying to claim that she was still in their bike or, you know, whatever. Shows you that they do deserve to be demonized. They do deserve backlash. Because now they're being cowards. They had no issues posting this video and ruining this woman's life. But now when it comes time for them to actually provide proof and evidence that justifies them posting that video in the first place, they're nowhere to be found. But Rashad Ritchie wants to come out here and to try to cape for these people. Cape for these young black teenagers who, again, probably will rob him. Right? If that's what they was doing. They can't even come out here and to try to tell their side of the story to say, hey, it was a mix up. Because that would make the race hustles look better. That would clear all this stuff up. The reason why is because their intent probably was not good. They probably had ill intent. That's what common sense would lead you to believe. But again, these people are lacking that, which is why they're in this situation in the first place. There was also a statement from the hospital that called the incident disturbing. I want everyone to know that my advocacy was not in bad faith. <laughs> yes, it was. 100% in bad faith. It was in bad faith. You were trying to push a narrative because your whole channel is about basically trying to demonize and to incite hatred towards white people, more specifically white women. That's what your whole channel is about. It doesn't mean that it wasn't wrong. 
It doesn't mean that the youth operated in bad faith either. Possibly there's an explanation why both believed they were in fact entitled to that particular bike. There is no explanation. If there was an explanation, if it was an honest mistake, they would come out here and say, hey, it was an honest mistake. We're sorry. They would clear everything up. Why are they not doing it? Why are they nowhere to be found? Again, these are the most wanted black men in America right now. It's because they had no good faith that the bike belonged to them. It's because their intent probably was bad. It's because they were probably doing something they weren't supposed to do. And that's why you have stuff like this happening. It's because you have people like this guy who continue to cape for criminals. Oh, don't demonize the youth. They're youth. This is why we have a youth problem. Because there's not enough demonization. There's not enough calling out the bad behavior. There's not enough punishment. You want to go soft on people who ain't soft on nobody else. It's crazy, man. I say that to highlight a reality here, okay? I'm a zealous advocate. I've always been a zealous advocate, will continue to be so. But I'm not Fox News. <laughs> yes, you are. When I'm presented with evidence that shows, well, at least contrary to the overall conclusion, that somehow she knew she did not have access to that bike. Well, that's not true if the receipts are real. She believed she had access to the bike. So for that matter, to the woman who was in the middle of this, I submit to you my apologies as a man. Now, I do not like the fact that you screamed help me when you were not being robbed. Okay, so how do you know she wasn't being robbed? How do you know she wasn't being robbed? See, again, he's out here still making claims. He's trying to cape for these young kids. Oh, you weren't being robbed. How do you know she wasn't being robbed? Again, we can listen to what her lawyer is saying, but I think considering how racially charged this is, her lawyer is just trying to, at this point, uh, help her keep her job and to make this situation go away, right? He's trying to get people to shut up about it. He ain't really trying to play the race game here and to try to go after these kids because we all know that at that point, it now becomes, well, are they trying to demonize these young black kids? Are they trying to throw these young black kids in jail? It's a shame that we live in this type of society. But you don't know they weren't trying to rob her. You don't know. You have no clue. I still have a, an issue with that. And I don't like the people who are saying all over social media that these young black men were trying to rob. The woman in that moment, I do not believe that's what happened. Still don't believe that's what was happening. I believe that they both believed that they had access to that city bike. Naivety, <laughs> right? Again, I don't know if they was trying to rob her either, but I'm not naive enough to sit here and believe, considering the information we have now that these black uh, teenagers actually thought that bike belonged to them. I don't think that. Again, it could have been a prank. It could have been something else going on. They might not necessarily have been trying to rob her, but I don't believe they actually really believe that bike belonged to them. I'm, I'm inclined to believe that the most benign explanation is that it was a prank that went wrong. And until we have additional information, well, that's where it's at now. But I want to make it very clear. What we do here is opinion commentary. Sometimes that opinion can be incorrect, but it doesn't mean it was developed nor presented in bad faith. And when there's a moment like this, I can't speak for everybody else, I can speak for me. When there's a moment like this, I will always look into this camera and let you know specifically that I am sorry for getting it wrong because I give a damn about getting it right. No, you don't. If that's the case, issue an apology for the video that you still have up, that you haven't taken down, of you smearing the little league players and their parents and coaches as racist for putting stuffing in a black player's hair. Why haven't you apologized for that? Why haven't you taken that video down? Oh, well, it's because you, there's no threat of you being sued. So I don't want, I, again, see, this is why I have a problem with this. This is why I'm less inclined to believe that this is a real apology, that you actually really feel sorry as much as you're trying to cover your ass. Because if it's something that you actually felt bad about, you would issue an apology for all the other times you've done this as well too. 
You don't just owe apology to this woman. You owe an apology to anybody else that you falsely smear as racist or racist situation when the facts of the matter came out that no, that wasn't racist. Again, like those little league players that this guy came out here and tried to say that the white players, their families might be racist. Okay, they're raising racist kids. When the truth came out and showed that, no, 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 they were actually putting the stuffing in other players' hair to try to emulate another player on another team that they admired. Where's the apology? Where's the retraction? I thought you cared about the truth. It's only because he's getting sued, right? Or the threat of getting sued is why he's doing this. That's the only reason. Because if that lawyer did not come out here and threaten defamation lawsuits, you wouldn't see this. He wouldn't have deleted the first video. He wouldn't have issued no update. He wouldn't have done no apology. He would have just kept it moving. It would have been business as usual. It's a shame that these people have to be faced with threats of lawsuits to actually have a semblance of integrity. So again, you know, I give him credit for actually issuing an apology, but just considering how, you know, you have more apologies to go. I, I don't think this is good enough, right? I'm not sure if this is good enough and I'm not sure how sincere this actually is. I think he's just upset and mad that he was wrong and that he has to issue an apology because if he doesn't, then he's going to get sued. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black and sort of perspective. Peace.